वेलकम बैक टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ चैप्टर 6 सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम इन ह्यूमंस इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट ब्लड ग्रुप्स एंड ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन एंड वी विल आल्सो बी लर्निंग अबाउट द लिम्फेटिक सिस्टम वी नो दैट ब्लड हैज अ सेल्युलर कंपोनेंट एंड वन टाइप ऑफ सेल इन द ब्लड इज द आरबीसी द सरफेस ऑफ द आरबीसी हैज proteins called antigens the plasma has antibodies depending on the presence of these proteins called antigens and antibodies human blood is classified into four groups it is also classified as rh positive and rh negative it is important to understand blood groups and classification based on these blood groups in order to perform blood transfusion so what is blood transfusion it is the process by which blood is transferred from one person to another person sometimes due to an injury or a major surgery or any certain illness there may be heavy loss of blood from the body the blood loss can be made up by transferring blood from a healthy person this process by which blood is transferred from a healthy person to another person is called blood transfusion blood cannot be transfused without matching the blood type of the donor and of the recipient that is why we need to know blood groups of the person donating the blood and blood group of the person who is going to receive or the recipient that is why we are going to understand blood groups the human blood group system is the abo blood group system antigens are proteins present on the surface of the rbc antigens are large protein molecules they are also present on the surface of bacteria and some uh, non living substances such as toxins and chemicals antigens stimulate the body to produce another kind of proteins called the antibodies these antibodies are chemical substances produced in the body in response to antigens so each antibody binds to a specific antigen just like how a key fits into a lock antibodies are present in the plasma so now there are two types of antigens antigen a and antigen b and there are two types of antibodies antibody a and antibody b based on the presence or absence of specific antigens human blood is classified into four groups blood group a has antigen a and antibody b blood group b has antigen b and antibody a blood group ab has both antigens that is antigen a and antigen b but it does not have any antibodies blood group o has neither antigen a nor b but it has antibodies a and b so no antigens but both antibodies are there in blood group o the antigens and antibodies work against each other when blood containing the opposite antigen is transfused into the body of a person the antibodies of the recipient will attack the donated blood and cause clumping let us understand this better antigen a and antibody a are incompatible that means blood group a and blood group b blood group a has antigen a and blood group b has antibody a so understand this carefully so these two blood groups blood group a and b will be incompatible and the antigen a antibody a will start clumping similarly antigen b and antibody b that means blood group b and blood group a antigen b is on blood group b antibody b is on blood group a these two are again incompatible therefore blood transfusion is done very carefully only after matching the blood groups of the donor and the recipient 
Let us look at the various blood transfusion compatibilities of various blood groups. Blood group A can donate to blood group A and AB person. Blood group A is compatible with blood group A. So, a person with A blood group can donate to another person with A blood group. Blood group A person can also donate to AB person because AB person has no antibodies. So, no reaction, antigen antibody reaction will occur. Blood group A can receive blood from blood group A person and O person. Again here A and A are compatible. Blood group O has no antigens. So here again antigen antibody will reaction will not occur between A and O. So A person can receive blood from O person. This is how we check the rest of the blood groups also. Blood group B person can donate to blood group B and blood group AB persons. They can receive blood from blood group B and O person. Blood group AB can donate blood only to blood group AB. This is because AB blood group has both the antigens A and B. So if they receive blood from any other person, they all have antibodies and those antibodies can react with these antigens here on AB. AB person can receive from Another AB person, blood group A person, blood group B person and blood group O also. This is because AB blood group does not have any antibodies and after receiving they won't have any problem. No clumping will take place. Blood group O person can donate blood to A, B, O and AB. So, this blood group is called universal donor. It can donate blood to all other blood group persons. They can receive blood only from blood group O. So, blood group O among all the blood groups is called universal donor since it can be given to a person with any blood group. Blood group AB is called universal recipient since it can receive blood from a person with any blood group. Next, let us understand rhesus factor or the RH factor. This is another antigen and it is found on the surface of RBCs. This antigen is the RH factor. It was first discovered in rhesus monkeys. 85% people have the RH factor. So, those people are said to be RH positive. The rest 15% do not have RH factor and they are called RH negative. When RH positive blood is transfused into RH negative person, the recipient or the person receiving the blood will form antibodies against the RH factor. Because RH negative person will not have the factor, it is recognized as non-self and antibodies are formed. But no complications will occur after the first transfusion because RH antibodies are short-lived. In the case of a second transfusion of RH positive blood into the RH negative person after a short period, the recipient's antibodies will attack the transfused blood and it will cause problems. So therefore, along with blood groups of donors and recipients, the RH factor also has to be matched to prevent clumping of RBCs. RH negative person can donate blood to an RH positive person of compatible blood group, but they cannot receive blood from the RH positive person. Now look at this RH compatibility chart. A positive person, A positive means the blood group is A and the person has the rhesus factor RH positive. A positive person can give blood to A positive and AB positive. They can receive blood from A positive, A negative, O positive and O negative. O positive being the universal donor can donate blood to O positive, A positive, B positive and AB positive. They can get blood only from O positive or O negative person. B positive person can give blood to B positive and AB positive. They can get blood from B positive, B negative, O positive and O negative. 
AB positive person can give blood only to AB positive person and AB positive person can receive blood from all because remember AB does not have antibodies. Look at the RH negative persons. A negative person can donate blood to A positive, A negative, AB positive, AB negative and they can get blood from A negative and O negative. O negative person can donate blood to everybody and they can get blood only from O negative person. B negative blood group can donate to B positive, B negative, AB positive and AB negative. They can get blood from B negative and O negative. And finally, now we are going to learn about the lymphatic system. In addition to the circulatory system, the body, human body also has a lymphatic system. It is an organ system. It is having a network of tissues and organs. The lymphatic system helps the body to get rid of toxins, waste materials and unwanted substances. The lymphatic system is also a part of the immune system. So lymphatic system is a part of circulatory system and also the immune system. The primary function of the lymphatic system is to transport lymph which is a fluid containing infection fighting white blood cells. This lymph is transported throughout the body. The lymphatic system consists of lymphatic vessels which are similar to veins and capillaries of the circulatory system. These vessels are connected to lymph nodes. Here lymph is filtered. The tonsils, adenoids, spleen and thymus are all parts of the lymphatic system. So now what is lymph? Lymph is a fluid that contains infection fighting white blood cells. When blood reaches the capillaries, some of the water and dissolved solutes are filtered out from the plasma into tissue spaces. This forms a tissue fluid which is called lymph. Some of this lymph enters into tiny channels and these channels are called lymph vessels. Basically, lymph has all the elements of blood except RBCs and platelets. Therefore, it is slightly yellowish in color and contains a special type of white blood cells which are called lymphocytes. These lymphocytes help in fighting infections. The lymph vessels resemble veins due to their thin walls and presence of valves. The lymph nodes are small globular mass of lymphatic tissue. What are the functions of lymph? The main functions of lymph are transportation, defense and drainage. Let us see in detail. What is transportation? Lymph helps in transporting nutrients and hormones to the body cells. It also removes waste materials from the body cells to the tissues and finally pours them into veins. Lymph nodes produce lymphocytes. Lymph will carry these lymphocytes and antibodies from the lymph nodes to the blood. Lymph also absorbs and transports fats that is fatty acids and glycerol from the small intestine into the blood. Another function of lymph is defense. As lymph carries lymphocytes and antibodies, it destroys harmful microorganisms. It also destroys foreign particles. This happens in the lymph nodes. Lymph picks up the bacteria entering the body and brings them to the lymph nodes. There they are destroyed. Lymph nodes also help in localizing the infection and preventing it from spreading to the other tissues. That means the infection will remain only in the lymph nodes. It will not be spread to other parts. That is why sometimes when a person has infection, we can see the lymph nodes swelling. It means that the infection has not spread elsewhere and it is remaining only in the lymph node, thus localizing the infection. Sometimes when we have a throat infection, we can see that our tonsils are swollen and painful. This is one example. Tonsils are two lymph nodes located on either side of the back of the throat. They help in preventing the body from infections. And finally, drainage is another function of lymph. The lymph drains excess tissue fluid from the intercellular spaces back into the blood. Tissue fluid is a fluid that surrounds the cells of most tissues. 
arriving through blood capillaries so this excess tissue fluid is drained back into the blood